Let's do some examples of using TTT diagrams to predict the microstructure of different steels when we quench it under different scenarios, right? So let's assume that we've got a eutectoid steel composition, so we can use this eutectoid TTT diagram, and it says the following, it's quenched at 650 degrees C, it's quenched down to 650 C, and then we hold it there for 20 seconds, and then it's quenched to 400 C, where it's held for 1,000 seconds. Okay, so right now we're assuming that we can change temperatures instantaneously all the way through your material. Um, that's not actually true, but we're going to assume that for right now. Okay, so what would happen? Well, let's go to 650C on this diagram. So at 650C for 20 seconds, this is 10 seconds, so this would be 20 seconds right there. Now at 650C, when I draw a line across here, it looks to me like we're basically right at that 50% line. So if we hold it for 20 seconds, what have we done so far? We've gone from austenite into perlite, and that is coarse perlite. But that's only 50% complete, right? Only 50% of our austenite has been consumed to form coarse perlite. And then it says we drop it down to 400 and we hold it for 1,000 seconds. So now we're going to go down here. We're going to go all the way up to 1,000. So what's happening down there? There, we've got austenite turning into, uh, I'm going to call it upper bainite. Bainite, so upper. And it goes 100%. However, what do we know about this? We've already consumed 50%. So this to start with, we only had... 50% to start with because we'd already converted 50% to coarse perlite. So we did a 100% conversion of 50%. So our final microstructure is going to be perlite 50% and bainite 50%. Okay? Now you might ask, well, when we held this down here, why wouldn't the perlite turn into bainite? Perlite cannot turn into bainite because perlite is big, thick grains. And if you hold it uh, for any, it's never going to form smaller grains, right? Because that's increasing its surface energy penalty. So if anything, things want to coarsen. You could turn bainite into perlite if you held it at high temperatures. If you did the bainite first and then you did the perlite, all of your bainite would start to turn into perlite because it would coarsen. But you'll never go the other way. It'll never start from really thick grains and all of a sudden get smaller ones, right? Uh, with the heat treatment. You have to do something else to make that happen, right? So that would be our final structure, 50% perlite. Uh, on the grain boundaries, and then 50% bainite on the inside. And that's just because it's going to form along the grain boundaries first. You're, that's going to be the first thing that gets consumed, right? How about this one? All right, let's do number A, right? A is this dark blue line where we hold it for a long time. To me, it looks like maybe past 50%, maybe 75% of the way or so, and then you quench it down through this martensitic transition. So for A, what I would expect from this, you know, not great drawing, I would expect for A that you have maybe 75% perlite and 25% martensite. That's what I would expect. Now B, how's B going to be different? B is the exact same as A, except then we heat it up and we hold it for some long amount of time. So then we're going to get 100% spheroidite. So you might say, why don't you get, um, why don't you get, 100% tempered martensite or or something. The reason why is because if you're holding anything at that really high temperature for long enough, all of your lamella, all of your things like your tempered martensite, which is coarse, you know, dispersions, they're all going to coarsen, right? You're giving them enough thermal energy that it's going to end up as spherodite. Um, what about this one, C? C goes down to 600. You hold it to the 50% line. Then you bring it down here and you reset it. And now you hold it for that amount of time, 10 seconds, and it reaches the 50% line there and then you quench it. So what do you end up with for C? C is going to end up with the following. It's going to be 25% perlite, or sorry, 50% perlite. It's going to be 25% bainite, which is, again, 50% of, of the remaining 50%. And then it's going to be 25% martensite. Right? So that's what we end up with there. What about D? For D, we now have that we quench it and we hold it out to here, but since it never touches that line, we never start forming bainite, and then you quench it straight down, so you end up with 100% martensite. Okay, let's do a couple more. How about this one over here? So we're gonna do E, F, and G. All right, E, they quench it past the nose, and then they hold it to about 25% uh, bainite, 
So we're going to have 25% bainite. And then they quench it down, so the rest is going to turn into martensite. So that's going to be 75% martensite, everything that was left over. Um, F, they hold it all the way through here to bainite, and then they quench it down. So it's going to be 100% bainite. It's not going to have any martensite because we consumed all of our austenite turning into bainite, and you only get martensite from austenite. So if you've consumed all of it, it doesn't matter that you quenched it. You don't get it. All right, for G, we're going to get 50% bainite, and then we're going to quench it, so we're going to get 50% martensite. And then H, they hold it down to here. They now hold it at this temperature. Just before it touches the line, they quench it, so now you have pure martensite, 100%. And then they heat treat it up to this relatively low temperature for a while, and then they bring it down. That is a recipe for tempered martensite. So we're going to get 100% tempered martensite. So that's how you use these TTT diagrams to predict the microstructure of steel. And again, since we know the properties of these things, martensite being the hardest, perlite being, well, perlite and spheroidite being the softest, when you get mixtures of these, then you can get a tunable uh, difference between the hardness and the strength of your material and the ductility of your material.